Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm like the explosive one. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. I don't know how big of a Swifty you are. You, you consider yourself a Swifty? I cannot. Okay, so look, man, when it comes to Taylor Swift, Swifties are Taylor Swift fans. You're not, yeah, yeah. not going to confuse me with that, Boomer. Um, um, am I a Taylor Swift fan? No. Do I respect her as a musical artist? I've come a long way, Jonas. I'm a Robbie head now. Barbie made me a Robbie head. Okay. I like Taylor Swift. Well, I mean, she writes all of her own stuff. I think. I'm, okay, fine, whatever. She, I mean, that's a that's a that's a. I respect her hustle. It is a hundred percent. If you want to get into like the music, I don't listen to her music. I know Drake. a couple of her songs. I don't really care for her music. It's ask not, Drake how easy writing all the songs is. I don't even know what that means. No, no. <laughs> look, it's like it's. Why, why are we? Why is he catching trays? He's not even here to defend himself. <laughs> Regardless, what I was going to say is that. I respect her hustle more than anything else. If you have gotten yourself to the point where you're the biggest star, like basically in America, and I don't even like know about you really. And I feel like people in, in certain demographics are like, I don't even know who this lady is, but you've already made that much of an influence where you're impacting stuff that's going around in the country. I respect that lady for it. Yeah. You want to hear something wild? Did you, did you hear about the Travis Kelsey I heard that she started dating Travis Kelsey. Are you super excited? I don't care. So I will let you know is that Travis Kelsey used to date a lot of black girls. Seems all of a sudden now he's with, with Taylor Swift, but who could turn her down? I mean, right? <laughs> so finish your statement. Baby. So she uh, she was at the game. There was a whole big thing. At, like they showed her at the Chiefs game or like whatever. Yeah. This I just wanted to talk about the Taylor Swift effect. How much power this woman has by just showing up somewhere. Uh huh. So, th this I, saw, I took a screenshot. I think it was the day after Monday or Tuesday. So it was like one or two days after. Travis Kelsey jersey sales increased four hundred percent. His podcast mm. jumped to number one on Apple. Mm. He gained. He himself gained three hundred and eighty three thousand new followers on Instagram. Mm. 20, what else? 24 million people watched the game. It, it was the most watched game that week. 63% more women aged 18 to 49 watched. And we're talking about just a regular game. And she was just shown in, in the stands. It's a regular season game. Yeah. The uh, threefold increases in searches for Chiefs online. And they have had more ticket sales since the beginning of the season in one day since Sunday. Yeah. Sorry, it's all right. So... That is insane. And and they are... Uh, Jesus Christ, what are you doing over there? I couldn't figure out how to turn my phone off, so I just threw it under the couch. <laughs> oh, that's, that's good. <laughs> just, that was my, that was my, I saw you scrambling. I, didn't I was, know. was trying to turn it off. It wouldn't turn off, so I just threw it under the couch, man. It's fine. I it's mean, still making noise. The monster got it. Well, you know what? Nobody will ever figure it uh, out. So... And then she also is coming out with a concert movie. I, I bet you that, I bet you that ish makes a billion dollars. Yeah. They're releasing it worldwide too. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, this is, that, that's, a, that's a new thing that I, I hear like a lot of, I, I wouldn't say it's a new thing. It's a relatively old thing, but it's been brought back around where artists will have like their uh, their concerts in the theater. We were talking about this when the, uh, we were talking about the Beyonce uh, listening only. Yeah, but I think, I don't know if this is just a concert or if it's like like a docu-concert where like it shows her behind the, behind the scenes plus the concert. Probably a little bit of both. Here's the wild part about that. Uh, AMC Theaters is the production company behind it. Yeah, and they're, they they said that uh, they're key, they're making forty percent of the profit off the movie because they created wow. it and they're producing it. Taylor gets sixty percent. AMC Theaters gets forty percent of the box office. That's good for them. Oh, absolutely. That's but like, crazy. it's just wild. So then it's like, so are theaters going to start making movies and produce like concert or whatever, producing them themselves, and they th cut Hollywood out and they make. Because they don't make a lot of money off the movies. No. They make all their money off concessions. and I mean, they do make some movie money. But when them. you produce it yourself, then... And they made sure that, uh, like, Cinemark Theaters won't get it because they couldn't come to an agreement with AMC because they're, you know, they're yeah, a distributor. Yeah. And I, I was, was going like, to ask about that. You know, honestly, wow. when you think about it, 
it's kind of ingenious. Why do why don't movie theaters produce their own movies? Oh, I it's an idea. Well, it's like Netflix started creating their own movies back in the day. Exactly, it, and then they'd have exclusivity with them. And I mean, not to say like they're bad or anything. I, I would say the vast majority of them are are sub poor, sub oh, yeah, mediocre. Yeah. But eventually, uh, every once in a while, they get that one hit series. Like yeah. the Witcher series was a big hit. Ozark yeah. was good. Ozark yeah, yeah. was really good. Yeah. So every once in a while, they they, they hit a home. But yeah, run. like if theaters start putting out their own movies and making. Like, you know, like if if they put out the bar, they would have made like four hundred million dollars off the Barbie movie just by putting it out. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, that's no, it, would have, it would have still had to be quality. Well, right, right. But like, it's yeah, it's it was like, wow, that's nuts. But yeah, like I, I, I could easily see the Taylor Swift concert movie worldwide making a billion dollars in sales. Yeah. Because yeah, enough maybe, people. Maybe, maybe. Like I could see. Yeah. I, I mean, see. but I'm not going to see it. I'm not. No, I don't care. So, uh, I don't but know. I can see women going to see it more than once. Like the girls that want to go see that love Taylor Swift. I could see them going I with mean, their friends a couple yeah, times. I think I think you doubt Taylor Tay Tay's ability with the with the men too, I'm man. Down. Oh, a lot well, of yeah, they're gonna go with their girlfriends and stuff. But like, there's a lot of guy Taylor Swift fans. She ain't just a man. for her to have the influence that she's having. She can't just be a, a gender like. N- like neutral type of thing. I mean, she has to be a gender neutral type of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but do you think it's she's she's uh do you think she's influencing like teen girls or guys more? Teen girls for sure. I would say is that that's probably the vast majority, but then like she's been around for so like we we did the math. She's been around for like what 2 years after Beyoncé when she was a child star. Yeah. So you got to figures like the people Oh, there were teen boys who were like Exactly. After people, her when she was 16. The like, people who yeah. were following her when she was a child, her her uh, fan base has aged up with her. So, yeah. There's a, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, we're talking about guys our age who like Taylor Swift. They're like, yeah, I remember her first album. Yeah. I was, I, <laughs> your phone is still going. I, I do. It's under the couch. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't exist. Anymore. I hear it, but it doesn't count because it's, <laughs> it's under the couch. But yeah, there, yeah, I guess you're right. There are like middle aged men who've been listening to Taylor Swift since. She was, they were, yeah. they were teenagers and she was a teenager yeah. and like, and those, those are, that's what, that's what we refer to as a, the core fan base. And that's the most important part of any fan base. So I would say is that Taylor has one of the strongest cores I've ever seen. Um, probably only dwarfed by Beyonce and honestly, probably not. I don't know if Beyonce was dating a football player, if all that would have happened. When Beyonce started dating Jay Z, it was one of the biggest news things that it was worldwide news as well. So this is the thing: is that I don't know if you've heard of this, but apparently, since Taylor Swift has started dating uh, Mr. Kelsey, she's going to be attending a lot more games, right? I would imagine, yeah. So the uh, the the the, uh, the league has already started securing her a comprehensive security detail. She might have to pay for it herself. I'm sure she can afford it um, because she's going to be going to a lot more games. So that means is that viewership for these games just to see her sitting in the we don't know yet. We don't know yet. It's it's honestly look, man, it's a cool thing, though. You're dating. You're dating a football player who's like a superstar. In exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're super famous, too. I get it. I'm not super like celebrity pilled, but I do get the excitement involved with it. If it were a if it was a musical artist who I was more, I don't know, interested in or a, a uh, an athlete I was more interested in, then it would be really. Yeah. Cool and well, and it's me. also two people who are kind of like well liked and wholesome and don't have any like real dirt like that yet not much has come out about kelsey where people haven't like don't think he's a piece of crap yet and taylor swift is just wholesome in general exactly so it's like it's like for me to give a shit about an artist and a a a, uh, an athlete to start playing drake would have to start dating lebron james (laughs) wait a second and then i would be tay tay swift and i'd be a swifty if if there was if there was a homosexual relationship between LeBron James oh and Drake. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> that that makes it stronger. All right. If there's a big gay LeBron and Drake. A big gay LeBron. <laughs> big gay Should Le- I name this episode Big Gay LeBron? No. <laughs> You're gonna get us copyright LeBron is litigious. Oh, that's funny. But it is funny to think that if LeBron and Drake had a, a love affair, that I would definitely be tuning in at those games. Like, What's going on with that? I just want to see the look in Drake's eye when he sees LeBron. Dr- Duncan. <laughs> 
He's in front row seats. He's just like goo goo gone. <laughs> get, get your man that looks at. <laughs> you like Drake looks at LeBron. <laughs> Jesus. That's all the time we have for this episode. Go to thecrazytime.com to subscribe for Jonas. Tia Tia. Yeah. Yeah.